Baruch Hashem, this is Mark Lichten Walter coming to you live on the 23rd day of September 2019. The guest call in number is 917 889 8827. That's 917 889 8827. We are broadcasting, doing the audio only podcast tonight. I don't have internet connection where I'm at. So, uh, but I am recording these videos for Facebook and for YouTube, so there will be, hopefully if the videos work, uh, videos posted on Facebook and YouTube. Also, you can find the reading for this program at fundamentallymormon.com. We are going to be reading The Church and the Gospel by Ogden Kraut. We're in chapter 11, The Only True God. I'll get right into the reading, and then after the reading, we will take phone calls. This is life eternal. The prophet Joseph Smith once said, quote, There are but a very few beings in the world who understand rightly the character of God. Teachings of the prophet Joseph Smith, page 343. And again, quote, The things of God are of deep import, and time and experience and careful and ponderous and solemn thoughts can only find them out. Teachings of the Prophet Joseph Smith, page 137. Quote, We can never comprehend the things of God and of heaven, but by revelation. We may spiritualize and express opinions to all eternity, but this, but that is no authority. Teachings of the Prophet Joseph Smith, page 292. I want to ask this congregation, every man, woman, and child, to answer the question in their own hearts, what kind of being God is? Ask yourself, yourselves, turn your thoughts into your hearts, and say, if any of you have seen, heard, or communed with him, this is a question that may occupy your attention for a long time. I again repeat the question, what kind of being is God? Does any man or woman know? Have any of you seen him or heard him or communed with him? Here is the question that will, peradventure, from this time henceforth, occupy your attention. The scriptures inform us that this is life eternal. That they may know, know, that they may know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. Doctrinal History of the Church, Volume Six, Page Three Hundred and Three. In this last reference, the prophet makes four important points. Number one: few people rightly understand the character of God. Number two, it takes deep, solemn thought and revelation to comprehend him. Number three, does any man or woman know him? Has anyone seen him? Number four, is, or it is life eternal to know the only true God. I want to say that just because you have seen him doesn't mean you really know him unless he reveals to you his person, who he is. Um... But people know about him, they know some things about him, and a lot of it is speculation and assumptions, um, unless God reveals himself to you fully. So, um, I, one real, real quick thing, we have a lot of listeners out there who are not LDS, and who do not know who Joseph Smith is, or they think they know something about him, but they don't really know him either. Um, as part uh, of the requirement for Zion to be re uh, redeemed, there had to be a prophet who would restore the gospel, and that is talked about in the Brat Hadashar or the New Testament. God had to send a prophet on the earth with the everlasting gospel to preach in its purity and also so that people might understand or learn the true character of God from a prophet who knew him personally. And that prophet in this dispensation was Joseph Smith Jr. 
and others have have come to know him as well but in order for Zion to be redeemed there had to be a people who would be taught to keep all of God's commandments correctly and in righteousness and that is why God chose at this time in the history of this earth to bring forth a prophet to restore the fullness of the gospel right at the end. Um, and that is what the prophet Joseph Smith's job was, to restore truth. And he wanted to restore so much. He laid the foundation so that Zion could be redeemed. But it's up to us as believers in Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach, to do as he has commanded so that we can come to know the only true God and be obedient to his laws and his commandments. This is important because in order for Adam and Undiamon to happen, that, that thing that is spoken of in Daniel chapter 7 where um, the Ancient of Days comes down out of heaven, in order for that to happen, Zion has to be redeemed so that the city of Enoch, the church and the church of the firstborn can come down out of heaven with all of the resurrected prophets. And uh, of course, people may not really fully understand Adam and Undiam, and especially if they're not LDS, but even those people, they wouldn't understand everything about Adam and Undiam. But in order for the Son of Man to return, Adam and Undiam has to take place. Continuing on with the reading. Oh, and by the way, for anybody who is following along, we're on page 148. With this groundwork laid out by the prophet Joseph Smith, we are challenged to put forth some very serious thought on this subject. It will take much study and effort to learn the identity, character, and disposition of God. Even God's creation of this world is still a mystery to nearly everyone. The restoration of the gospel has provided the answers to, to a multitude of questions, but still many remain unanswered. Even Joseph Smith admitted that he could not provide all the answers, and he could not tell the saint, saints one one hundredth part of what he knew. See, people damn themselves through their false traditions, and... The reason they damn themselves is they can't believe anything that they can't believe the fullness of what God wants to reveal to them because they've got so many assumptions and false traditions. And in order for them to break free of that strong delusion or that damnation, and that is only a damnation of knowledge, they have to uh, let go of their false traditions. Even those in Mormonism had false traditions and false false ideas. And when we believe in false traditions and ideas, the Spirit of God withdraws from us in that we are left to the buffetings of Satan and we can receive a spirit of depression, a spirit of anger, a spirit of, of uh, well, just all of the fruit of the adversary. But especially depression, when we believe false doctrines and they uh, pervade our, they're like abundant in our lives and in our thoughts, God withdraws from us. And we may feel despair from time to time when, um, when we uh, learn truth or when we hear truth, the Spirit will testify of truth. But the majority of our life will be spent in in a, a stupor of thought and, and in de a depression and a sadness. Continuing on, uh, and in order to get through that, we've got to let go of our false traditions. So, um, <clears throat> the story of man's creation and mortal beginning has been a complicated mass of theories and conjectures. Even the Bible presents some bizarre and figurative stories for which there is no definitive interpretation, at least by men, by men, mortal men and women on the earth. Because God knows the interpretation of all things, so that's why we have to go to him. Scripture is not for private interpretation. Religionists and scientists both admit they are not, that they 
have not determined the very beginning of man's history, yet there are plenty of speculations. Like, for instance, the Big Bang Theory or the theory of evolution. They they've got a lot of evidence, they think points towards something, but that's like I said, a lot of assumption. The Bible contains only a few verses about man's creation and says that he was scooped up like a muddy mud pie mud pie man and woman was taken out of his rib. Many of our school children are taught by scientific educators that a man <clears throat> that men mankind evolved from some bug or worm. Page 149. However, neither account provides the truth about the origin of man on earth. We are, in reality, children of Jehovah our Elohim, or children of God. Man has... Let me see here. Okay, quote. Man has descended from God. In fact, he is the same race as the gods, or the Elohim. His descent, so you know, in the scriptures where it says that we become co heirs with the Father and the Son, and He gives us all that He has. In order to receive all that He has, you must become mighty and strong like He is. You must become a prophet, and you must become a, uh, an Elohim or a God, an exaltation in order to receive of your fullness. So Jesus Christ stated during his mortal probation upon this earth, Be ye therefore perfect, even as my Father is perfect. But when he spoke to the Nephites, he said, Be ye therefore perfect, even as I and my Father are perfect. Because he went through the ordinance of atonement. He became a redeemer. Which, in order to receive exaltation, each of us men must go through that experience. Man is descended from God. In fact, he is the same race as the gods. His descendant has not been from a lower form of life. Or in other words, man is, the, it, man is in the most literal sense, a child of God, or Bene Elohim. This is not only true of the spirit of man, but of his body also. And quote, the creation of man, priesthood course study, Course of Study from the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, written in 1910. The Prophet Joseph Smith was asked many questions on this subject, especially, quote, How did the first person get on this earth? End quote. This and many other questions will be answered in this chapter in the words of the early church leaders themselves. For the Lord has said, that this dispensation is the time when many of these hidden truths will be will be known. That's weird. It says I have 90 seconds. Huh. I guess I'll just keep going through it. Hopefully we can get through this in an hour. For I deign to reveal unto my church many uh, things which have been kept hid from before the foundation of the world. Things that pertain to the dispensation of the fullness of times. Doctrine and Covenants, section 124, verse 41. I think it's because I went live right at like 1140 and it's trying to cut me off. But there'll be an hour of overtime, hopefully, for the radio program. Or I'll just have to redo this one tomorrow. I was just trying to make sure. I can do one radio program a day from midnight to midnight. And I wanted to be able to start before midnight or before midnight so I wouldn't lose this this time and this space because it's already well right now it's almost it's almost Wednesday and I wanted to be able to at least get a Tuesday program in before Wednesday started and then do another one tonight but as any of you who have followed me you know that it is hard for me to do everything that I do and I was just telling one of my friends that what really is hard is that if I do a radio program, I guarantee you I am losing out on sleep that I need. But I feel like I need to do these, so I'm doing them. So, And the other thing, too, it doesn't matter who I am. I know I've got a lot of claims. 
What matters is if what I say are true. If you believe that the leaders of the church cannot lead the church astray, as is taught in the LDS church, then all of these quotes from Brigham Young and from Joseph Smith and from John Taylor, they all matter. And we should know about them. And we should study them. Of course, we're not supposed to trust in the flesh and we're supposed to get revelation for ourselves. Uh, or trust fully in the flesh, but we need to get revelation for ourselves. Anyway, there is many things which belong to the powers of the priesthood and the keys thereof that have been kept hidden from before the foundation of the world. They are hid from the wise and prudent to be revealed in the last times. Doctrinal History of the Church, Volume 4, page 209 and uh, through 210. With this in mind, let us begin from the first first of nine pertinent questions. Number one, is the mud man story of Adam and Eve a literal or true story? If not, how did they get their bodies? Listen, ye Latter-day Saints, supposing, this is Brigham Young, supposing that Adam was formed actually out of the clay, out of the same kind of material from which bricks are formed, that with the, this matter, God made the pattern of man and breathed into it the breath of life and left it there. In that state of supposed perfection, he would have been an adobe to this day. Brigham Young, Journal of Discourses, Volume 2, page 6. God has set many signs on the earth as well as in the heavens. For, for instance, the oak in the forest, the fruit of the tree... The herb of the field all bear a sign that that seed hath been planted there, for it is a decree of the Lord that every tree, plant, and herb-bearing seed should bring forth of its kind, and cannot come forth of after any other principle. Joseph Smith, Teachings of the Prophet, Joseph Smith, page 198. God made his children like himself to stand erect and, and has endowed them with intelligence and power and dominion over all his works and has given them the same attributes which he himself possesses. He created man as we create our children. There is no other process of creation in heaven, on earth, or in the earth, or under the earth or in all the eternities, that is, that that was or ever will be. Brigham Young, Journal of Discourses, Volume 11, page 122. If Abraham reasoned thus, if Jesus Christ was the Son of God, and John discovered the, that God the Father of Jesus Christ had a father, you may suppose that he had a father also. There was where was there ever a, a son without a father? And where was there ever a father without first being a son? Whenever, whenever did a tree or anything spring into existence without a progenitor? And everything comes in this way. Teachings of the Prophet Joseph Smith, page 379. Now about the rib. For as the Lord taking a rib out of Adam's side to make a woman of, he took one out of uh, out of my side just as much quote but brother brigham would you make it appear that moses did not tell the truth no not a par particle more than i would than i would that your mother did not tell you the truth when she told you that little bit billy came from a hollow to hollow toadstool i would not accuse your mother of lying any more than I would Moses. The people in the days of Moses wanted to know things that was not for them, the same as your children do. When they want to know where their little brother came from, and he answered them according to their folly, the same as your uh, as did your child did your children. Now some will say will be ready to say, we have heard these Mormons did not believe the Bible. I believe all the truth that there is, and that is enough for me and for you to believe. Then the Lord did not make Adam out of the dust of the earth. Yes, he did. 
but I have not got to or got to that part of my discourse yet. Adam was made out of the dust of the earth. Was he made out of the dust of this earth? No, but the dust of the earth where he was born in the flesh. That is, the way he was made, he was made of dust. Did the Lord put him into him his spirit? Yes, as the Lord puts in into you your spirit, he was begotten of a father, a father, and brought forth as you and I were. And so are all intelligent beings brought forth from eternity to eternity. Man was not made the same as you, as you make an adobe to put in, in a wall. Moses said Adam was made out of the dust of the ground, but he did not say of what ground. And quote Brigham Young, uh, L. John Nuttall Journal, February 7th, 1877. And that was like about four or five months before he died, actually. We are informed that the Lord God made every plant of the field before it was in the earth, and every herb before it grew on our planet. As vegetation was created or made to grow upon some older earth, so likewise man and his helpmate were brought from some other world to our own to people it with their children. And though it is said that the Lord God formed man out of the dust of the ground, it by no means follows that he was formed as one might form a brick or from the dust of this earth. We are all formed of the dust of the ground. Though instead of being molded as a brick, we, we are brought forth by natural laws of procreation. So also was Adam and his wife in some other world. Page 152. And as for the story of the rib, understand it, I believe the mystery of procreation is hidden. B.H. Robert, Roberts, Contributor Magazine, Volume 10, page 265. We have heard about a great deal about Adam and Eve and how they were formed, etc. Some think that it was made like that he was made like an adobe, and the Lord breathed into him the breath of life. For we read, quote, From dust thou art, and unto dust thou shalt return. Well, he was made of the dust of the earth, but not the dust of this earth, because he was a resurrected being when he came into the... Hold on here. Just realized that my... Uh, my stuff wasn't plugged in, so my uh, video recorders are going to die. So I've actually got two video recorders right now, an iPad and an iPhone. Uh, so if one of them fails, hopefully I can like have the, the video from the other one. So anyway, well, he was made from the dust of the earth, but not of this earth. He was made just the same way you or I are made, but on another earth. Brigham Young, L. John Nuttall Journal, volume eight, or 1, page 18. And here let me state to all philosoph philosophers of every class upon the earth, when you tell me that Father Adam was, was made as we make adobes from the earth, or bricks from the earth, you tell me what I deem an idle tell. When you tell me that the, be the beasts of the field were produced in that manner, you are speaking idle words devoid of meaning. There is no such thing in all the eternities where the gods dwell. Mankind are here because they are the offspring of parents who were first brought here from another planet. And power was given them to pro pro propagate their species. And they were commanded to multiply and replenish the earth. End quote. Brigham Young Journal of Discourses, Volume 7, page 285. Number 2. What was the, natu the, na they, the nature of the fall? What happened to Adam and Eve when they partook of the forbidden fruit? Adam and Eve, were, when they were placed on this earth, were immortal beings of flesh and bone and sinew. 
But upon partaking of the fruits of this earth, while in the garden and cultivating the ground, their bodies became changed from immortal to mortal beings. So they fell. They fell. They were, they were immortal beings, resurrected beings. They partook of the mortal fruit of this earth and they became mortal beings. And they had to do that so that they could create spirit. Uh, uh, so a, a resurrected being can help bring forth spirit children, but a mortal being brings forth the bodies for those spirit children. Let's see here. Their bodies became changed from immortal, immortal to mortal beings with blood coursing through their veins as the action of life. Let me just see if my plugs are all right. Because I don't want to... I actually like the video on my iPhone more than I like it on my iPad. It looks a little grainy on my iPad. Of course, my iPad is way older than my iPhone, so let's see here. Adam was not under transgression until he partook of the forbidden fruit. This was necessary that they might be together, that man might be. We're on page 153, and that is a quote of Brigham Young that can be found in the L. John Nuttall Journal, page or volume 1, page 20. And L. John Nuttall was the was the secretary of Brigham Young and John Taylor. They came here, organized the raw material, and arranged in their order the herbs of the field, the trees, the apple, the plum, or the peach, the plum, the pear, and every other fruit that is desirable and good for man. The seed was brought from another sphere or another planet and planted here in this earth. The thistle, the thorn, the briar, and the obnoxious weed did not appear until after the earth was cursed. When Adam and Eve had eaten of the forbidden fruit, their bodies became mortal from its effects, and therefore their offspring were mortal. Brigham Young, Journal of Discourses, Volume 1, page 50. The forbidden tree, says Brigham, contained in, it, in its fruit the element of death, the elements of death, or the elements of mortality. By eating of it, blood was again infused into the tabernacle or the bodies of beings who had become immortal. The basis of mortal generation is with blood. Without blood, no mortal can be formed. Even could mortals have been conceived on the earth, the trees of life had made but the paradise of a few. But mortal, the mortal world was the object of creation then. Eve partook of that supper of the Lord's death first. She ate of that body and drank of that blood. So she was doing more than just eating some fruit. It, it or be it to Adam's eternal credit that we that he stood by and let our mother. Our ever-blessed mother, Eve. So Michael, the archangel, became Adam and came upon the earth. And our mother, Eve, or Hava, her name is Ashura. That is, that is our mother. Her true identity is Ashura. Our ever-blessed Mother Eve partake of the, the sacrifice before himself. Adam followed the mother's example, for he was the great and grand father, worthy indeed of a world. He was wise too, for the blood of life is the stream of, or, yeah, the stream of mortality. And quote Edward Tollage, Woman of Mormondom, page 198 and 199. Number three, were Adam and Eve aware of the effect that the fall would have on them and their children? In my fullest belief, it was the design of the Lord that Adam should partake of the forbidden fruit, and I believe that Adam knew all about it before he came to this earth. I believe there was no other way. 
page 154, leading to thorns and dominions only for him to transgress and take that position which transgression alone could place man, could place man in. To descend, to descend, below all things, they might ascend to thrones, principalities, and powers, for they could not ascend to the eminence without first descending, nor upon any other principle. Brigham Young, Journal of Discourses, Volume 2, page 302. And I reckon that Adam came into the Garden of Eden and did actually eat of the fruit that he himself planted. And I reckon there was a previous understanding and the whole plan was previously calculated before the Garden of Eden was made. That he would reduce his posterity to, to uh, sin, misery, darkness, wickedness, wretchedness, and to the power of the devil, that they might be prepared for exaltation. See, in order to receive exaltation, you actually have to go to the depths to understand the full, the full scope of, of what it means to be mortal. For without this, they could not receive one, or an, an eternal, exalted exaltation. Teachings of the prophet, Brigham Young, teachings, yeah, teachings of Brigham Young by Fred Collier, October 8th, 1854, page 360. After the earth was prepared, Father Adam came and stayed here, and there was a woman brought to him. Now I am telling you something that many of you know. It has been told you, for the brethren and the sisters should understand it. There was a certain woman brought to to Father Adam, whose name was Eve, or in Hebrew, Hava. Because she was the first woman, and she was given to him to be his wife, I am not disposed to give any further knowledge concerning her at present. There is no doubt, but he le left many co companions. The great and glorious doctrine that pertains to this I have not time to dwell upon. Neither should I at present, if I had time. He understood this whole ma machinery or system before he came into this earth, or came to this earth, and I hope my brethren and sisters will profit by what I have told, told them. Brigham Young, Journal of Discourses, Volume 16, page 167. So in the endowment... And the temple endowment, the Elohim, the council of the gods, send Yehovah and Michael to create an earth. When Yehovah and Michael get to this earth, Yehovah says, go Michael and create the earth. And Michael says, it shall be done. And then Michael is the one that does the creation. Joseph Smith taught that the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost are God the Creator, the Father, God the Redeemer, and God the Witness, or the Holy Ghost. In Zechariah 4.14, it actually talks about the two anointed ones, or Messiahs, who come and stand before the Lord of the whole earth. That's Zechariah chapter 4 verse 14. That is speaking of Jehovah. Well, it's speaking of more than that. That's speaking of the Father, the Redeemer, and the Witness. So the Redeemer and the Witness are Messiah ben Judah. Or the King Messiah from the line of David. And Messiah ben Ephraim or the witness of the Father, Messiah ben Ephraim. Two separate individuals. They're not the same persons. Number four. What kind of body did Adam and Eve bring into the Garden of Eden? Physical or spiritual? Mortal or immortal? Or on page 155 for those of you who are following along. There was no blood in his uh, speaking of Adam's body. 
but he had a spiritual body until he was changed by the fall. The spiritual body, which is physical, is not quickened by blood, but by the Spirit. So when we receive our exalted, resurrected bodies, we will not have blood in us. We will be quickened by light and not blood. Before the fall, Adam had a physical, tangible body of flesh and bones, but it was not quickened by blood. Joseph Fielding Smith, Church History and Modern Revelation, 1948, second in the series of four Melchizedek Priesthood Manuals, on page 5. Question. As Adam was an, as Adam was an immortal being when placed here on the earth and commanded to multiply, would not his offspring have been immortal but for the fall? MPF, Logan, Utah. Answer, yes, but they would have had spiritual bodies only and not bodies of flesh, blood, and bone. When Adam and Eve were first placed in the Garden of Eden, they had resurrected bodies in which there was no blood. A spiritual fluid or substance circulated in their veins instead of blood. And it's light that actually circulates in a resurrected being's body. Consequently, they had not power to beget children with tabernacles of flesh, such as human beings possess. The fall caused a change in their bodies, which while it rendered them mortal, at the same time gave them power to create mortal bodies of flesh and, bone, or, and blood and bone for their offspring. This is a very brief explanation of a very important subject. Liahona Magazine, Volume 6, page, three, uh, page 33. There were first, they were, things were first created spiritually. So when there's two accounts of the creation in Genesis, the first one is the, the spiritual account of creation or organization, and the second is an, as an account of the physical. That's why there's two creations in Genesis. Things were first created spiritually. The Father actually begot the spirits, and they were brought forth and lived with him. He, then he commenced the work of creating earthly tabernacles precisely as they had been created in the flesh himself, by partaking of the coarse material that was organized and composed, uh, that composed this earth. Gotta roll this window down. I'm getting hot in here, even though it's 12:25 in the morning. Let that cool breeze go through here, and hopefully, uh, we won't have any semi trucks driving by because uh, they get kind of loud. All right, let's see. Precisely as had, he had been created in the flesh himself by partaking of the coarse material that was organized and com composed this earth until his system was charged with it. Consequently, the tabernacles of his own children were organized from the coarse materials of this earth. Brigham Young, Journal of Discourses, Volume 4, page 218. And what was the fullest extent of the, pe the penalty of Adam's transgression? I will tell you. It was death. The death of what? The death of the immortal taber tabernacle of that tabernacle where the seeds of death had not been. So he fell. He fell from a resurrected being to a mortal being on purpose. This is all part of the plan. It wasn't an accident or a mistake. That was wisely framed and pronounced very good. The seeds of death were introduced into it how and in what manner? Some say there was something in the nature of the fruit that introduced mortality. Masterful discourses of the Apostle Orson Pratt by Lundwell, page 336. Adam and Eve were made of the dust of the earth from which they came. 
They brought their bodies with them because they were already resurrected beings. They had lived and died and been resurrected before they came here and they came with immortal bodies and had to partake of the fruit of this earth in order to bring forth mortal bodies or natural bodies that their seed might be of the dust of this earth as they were of the dust of the earth of the earth from which they came. Samuel W. Richard, Richards, Journal 1, Book 2, pages 63 through 64. We have not the power in the flesh to create and bring forth or produce a spirit, but we have the power to produce a temporal body. The germ of this God has placed within us. And when our spirits receive our bodies and through our faithfulness, we are worthy to be crowned. We, we will then receive authority to produce both spirit and body. Brigham Young, Journal of Discourses, Volume 15, page 300, I'm sorry, page 137. When our father Adam came into the Garden of Eden, he came into it with a celestial body. Brigham Young, Journal of Discourses, Volume 1, page 50. Wow. I am really struggling with this. I don't know why this thing wants to die. Let me just see if I can fix it. Hopefully we don't lose the video because that would not be that would not make me happy. Hopefully this change in this plug will do it. Eve, immortal Eve, or Ashura, came down to earth to become the mother of a race, the human race. How became or become the mother of the world of mortals except by herself again becoming mortal? How become mortals? Only by transgressing the laws of immortality. How only by eating of the forbidden fruit, by partaking of the elements of the mortal earth, in which the seed of death was everywhere scattered. All orthodox theologians believe Adam and Eve to have been at for first immortal and all acknowledge the great command, be fruitful and multiply. Page 157. That they were not, not about to become the parents of a world of immortals is evident. For they were on, on a mortal earth. Toolage, Woman of Mormondom, Mormondom page one, 197 and 198. Adam and Eve, as immortal beings, were placed on earth and commanded to multiply and fill the earth with, with posterity. Bruce R. McConkie, A Light Unto the World, page 4. Number 5. How did the animals, birds, and other living things get on this planet? Quote, He, speaking of Adam, was the person who brought the animals and the seeds from other planets to this world and brought a wife with him and stayed here. You may read and believe what you please as, as to what is found written in the Bible. And quote Brigham Young, Journal of Discourses, volume 3, page 319. After the earth was made, then there was a garden spot selected, and the Lord commanded some of his associates to go and plant it and to cause all kinds of vegetation to grow and fruits of every description. Some suppose the Lord commanded all these things to come out of the earth. Yes, he did, after the seeds were put into the earth, and he blessed the earth, and the vegetation that was in the earth. When all these things were done, the garden was beautified and made pure and clean and holy, and sanctified, and then the next thing was to bring forth the animal creation. 
but the animals were not brought brought there until the vegetation was planted and grown. We often sing, quote, This earth was once a garden place where God our Father dwelt and took possession in a stand that mankind will will take who attain to that honor. Sorry, I'm getting really tired here. And I still have to drive back to the yard too. So I'll just walk around the truck and then I'll give me... It's about 20 minutes. Oh, excuse me, 20 minutes to the yard where I park this semi truck at. So, the religion of Jesus Christ, of angels, of Brigham, and all good men is to take care of, of and improve and adorn the earth as Adam did. did. When he planted the, the garden, he planted it with seeds he brought with him. And he also brought the animals from the from the earth he lived upon, where his father dwelt. Heber C. Kimball, Journal of Discourses, Volume 8, page 243, page 58. We have been taught that our Father and God, from whom we sprang, called and appointed his servants to go and organize the earth and and among all the rest he said to Adam you go along with and also and help all you can you are going to inhabit it when it was when it is organized therefore go and assist in the good work it reads in the scripture that the lord did but the true, I, the true rendering is that the Almighty sent, sent Jehovah and Michael to do the work. They were also instructed to, to every plant kind. They were also instructed to plant every kind of vegetable. Likewise, the forest and the fruit trees. And they actually brought from, from heaven every variety of fruit and the seeds of vegetables and the seeds of flowers and plants that and planted them on the earth which we dwell and i will say more and i will say more the spot chosen for the garden of eden was jackson county in the state of missouri i don't agree with that that's where they went to after the Garden of Eden, not where they were. And then they went out to some place, and then, I don't know. Um, I believe a little bit different. All right, so let's see here. It was occupied in, in the morn of creation by Adam and his associate, who came with him for the express purpose of peopling the earth. Heber C. Kimball, Journal of Discourses, Volume 10, page 235, and I, I don't know. Anyway, I, oh my gosh, I am so tired. I'm going to have to do a part two. I didn't think I'd have to do a part two, but I need to get out of this truck and I'm dying right now. So let me just finish this. What role did Adam, Michael, or the Ancient of Days play according to the prophet Joseph Smith? He, speaking of Adam, is the head and was told to multiply. The keys were first given to him and by him to others. He will have to give an account of his stewardship and they, and they to him. Teachings of the Prophet Joseph Smith, page 158. We cannot be made perfect without them, angels, nor can they without us. When these things are done, the Son of Man will descend. The Ancient of Days sits. Teachings of the Prophet Joseph Smith, page 159. So I'm going to leave it at that for this this point. We are going. I'll be back on uh, tomorrow. I just. I'm falling asleep here.
and uh, I gotta get out and walk around the truck so I can wake up a little bit and then go park the truck and go home and go to bed. So it's it's difficult this life that I lead. Let's see here. We're gonna check real quick to see if there's anybody in the studio. And it looks like it's just me. Let me refresh the screen here. Huh. Just waiting for it to refresh. Yeah, we don't have any we don't have any callers right now, so anyway, but that's a fifty minute program. Uh, I'm pretty sure we'll get through the rest of it tomorrow. On the 24th, which is today, actually, because it's, uh, it's 1238 here. So, anyway, I'll uh, upload these to YouTube tomorrow. Thank you for watching, everyone. I'm sorry I wasn't able to get through the whole thing. And I'm sorry that uh, basically what's going on right now is I'm trying to work as much as I can so that we can afford to move. Because we have to move. November 1st. At the latest. I have to come up with a lot of money. Not only for the moving process. But for the down payment on the house that we're buying. Not only that. So I got to work as much as I can. But not only that. We have a little three month old. Three and a half. His name is Arius. Arius Kevin Tiberius Lichtenwalter. And little mister needs daddy to watch him while mommy goes to work. My my wife works at a, hel uh, a elementary school. An elementary school up in Carbon County. So I go home and I try to get some sleep. And then I wake up with the baby. And like the baby this morning woke me up because he rolled. I put him next to me on the bed. Uh in between some pillows but I was like lay, laying kind of close to him and he grabbed my beard and he was yanking on it um, talking to me in his little three month old baby jibber jabber noises and uh, so I woke up and got him some milk and put him in a bundle because it was kind of cold in the house because we haven't started our fires in our wood stove yet and um Oh, excuse me. Ugh. And uh, I, I wrapped him up and then I fed him later again. And I, you know, like he's a really good baby. This baby is awesome. And he's so cute. And you want to see pictures of him or videos? Follow me on Facebook. Facebook.com forward slash L A Z U R U S 1977. So, and, uh, but. I have to watch my three month old and my four year old and I can't just do videos and radio shows because he's like a time bomb. He goes off at any point. You never know when he's going to cry and you got to go fix him and help him out. But anyway, so that's what it is. That's what's going on right now. Hopefully they don't back out of this deal that we're doing to buy this house, which is a possibility that they're going to back out. So. If anybody could throw some prayers our way, if it is the will of the Lord, and ask that we be blessed, we'd really appreciate that. Because we have our heart set on moving into this place. It's 10 acres, 26 shares of water. There's six bedrooms, which means that each of my kids can have their own bed and bedroom. And, you know, it's a little bit run down, but they're selling it to us for a pretty good price. Plus, with all the land and the irrigation that's already there, we are very excited. And we'll be very excited as soon as they figure out what they're doing and get the contracts and everything written up and whatever. So... Anyway, but I'm going to leave it at that. We don't have anybody on the guest call line. Maybe we'll have somebody tomorrow. I will post this at fundamentallymormon.com and on YouTube, youtube.com forward slash L, uh, user forward slash God is my compass and also on Facebook at facebook.com 
forward slash user. No, it's facebook.com forward slash LAZURUS 1977. So I got to walk around this truck a couple of times and wake up so I can drive the 15 miles back to the yard. And uh, thank you for watching, everyone. Take care. God bless. I hope that God richly blesses you, and I hope the Spirit testifies to the truth, and you understand it and can comprehend it. So I say that in the name of Yeshua, our Messiah. Amen.